Um, I've been green fish for quite a number of years. I'm not a scientific guy whatsoever. So I'm not going to give you a homogeneous name. None of, I can't, I forget it, I can't do it. But I'm going to give you the basics that I do that seem to give me great success and go through some of the stuff I'm working on. All right? I've, uh, I started breeding when I was 10. Uh, first thing I bred on my own were bettas. Was, uh, <coughs> I was hooked ever since. My dad and I had tanks, you know, he had a community tank with live bearers and catfish and stuff like that. And the first one I, ones I did were, were bettas. It was really quite neat, and I was hooked from that point. Uh, I joined the International Fancy Guppy Association and the NEFGA, which is the New England Fancy Guppy Association, in 2016. Um, within the eight years now of breeding guppies, I have won the grand overall female championship in 2019, the grand overall male runner-up in 2018, more than 20 color classes as well. Um, I don't know the guppies, but how did I get into Corey's? It's ironically funny, because I was at a club meeting, and one of the guys told me here, it's a bag of albino Corey's, take them home. It was good to help clean out the tank and stuff like that with some of the guppies. I was like, all right, what the heck. So I take them home and I drop them in a tank and a week later I got eggs everywhere. So I'm like, holy cow, here we go. So I scraped the eggs out and I put them in a thing and they all died. They all swung us over and died. So uh, I think it was like two weeks later they bred again. So you get in there, scrape the eggs again. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. I get them in a container. I put methylene blue in there and the eggs fungus again. So I'm like, yeah, I know we're breeding angels. Methylene blue is a great method and it usually works to help with the eggs. That wasn't working for me. So like today's technology, I go to the internet. Simple and easy. So I started looking at videos. Success is here. Who's doing this? Who's here? Who's doing that? So Erskine, if you want to go to the next one for me. As I got better with understanding, I dumped methylene blue. I don't use it at all. So I'll come into that a little later in some of the slides. But the room, Alex, my youngest son, helped me throw this together today. There were more pictures, but he took some out. He said, didn't need that many. I have 178 tanks currently in my room. My smallest is a two and a half. My largest is a 20 long. I don't have anything bigger than the 20 long. Um, I currently am breeding guppies, as you saw from the beginning. Um, 44 different species of Coriodorus right now I'm, I'm working with. More than half of those I'm currently have spawned. <coughs> so it's really, it's, it's become a, more of an obsession now. And I spend a lot of time talking on like planet Coriodorus and stuff like that, talking with some of the guys over <coughs> the way and uh, messaging me back on, you know, okay, you, you realize how tough that Cory is to breed or, or that's an easy one to breed and it's you know, it gets you going. Where do you live, Chris? I live in Bristol, Connecticut, just about 20 minutes outside of Hartford. So some of the quarry species I'm currently <coughs> breeding, white pandas, I've got those spawning, long fin pandas. It's ironically funny, it doesn't seem to matter with the long fin and the panda species in general. They always seem to want to eat their eggs as soon as they drop them on the glass. This one species, it kind of catches me every time I put the grass in there, and they'll lay eggs in the grass, and then I'll literally find them minutes later going through the grass, trying to eat the eggs. I don't know what it is with the panda species, so I'm kind of like sometimes I'm like one of those obsessed fish room people. I'll go in, all the lights are off, I'll go with a flashlight and start looking to see what's going on. I got my fingers in there pulling eggs out where I can, and so on and so forth. Albino Sturbot. I've spawned these and I was kind of shocked because it was really by accident. I was doing some plant work for the next tank over, which were regular Sturbot. And one of the males must have got caught in the plant because they were not spawning for me at all. So I moved, over, I, I moved the plant over and I saw the male in there swimming around and I just left him there. The next morning I came downstairs and there were eggs and he was chasing the females around. So I found that kind of, these are, these are actually one of my favorites only because you know how the albino la the gold lasers that they have have that nice really kind of orangish gold sheen to them? These at the base, the Sturbi, have that nice orangish sheen. So they're, they're one of my favorite cords. 
Robin A, I haven't spawned yet. I got this group from a, a guy who was moving in New Jersey. I bought a bunch of quarries from him. And I really want to spawn this species because they're beautiful. The pattern's nice. They got a little bit of a yellowish color to them, almost like a uh, C123 yellow cap. At least at the base of the fins, really, really cool quarry. Uh, these are uh, a friend and I pitched in to buy this group. They're uh, very expensive. They haven't spawned yet, but they're chasing, which is great. I can't wait for these to spawn. These were wild, so um, I'm looking forward. The Evo, I think it's called Evelyn, Evelyn, whatever you want to call it. But uh, years ago. Yeah, and it's Hey, you know, I want to get these. Do you want to jump in? And just put the bill was expensive. Like nine of them were 800 bucks. So it's, it's, they're a pricey quarry. Go ahead. Harold shows you this. I posted this on Planet Corridors, and I don't think it was five minutes. Two of the moderators messaged me back and said, Do you know that these have never been bred in captivity before? And he says, Not that any of us are aware of. We've never seen them, so I said, okay, well, that sounds like a challenge, so I'm very, very interested in getting them going. Um, the females I have in the tank now have gotten nice and robust, so I'm kind of got my fingers crossed, so I keep watching the tank every day to hopefully get them to spawn soon. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when it, back in November, I was supposed to come here to do this lecture, and I actually got COVID the week I was supposed to come up here. So I um, I was out of the room, literally. I didn't go in the room for a full week. I didn't go in, my, my youngest son was off to water changes and stuff like that, took care of the room for me, basically fed them and changed the water for the full week. When I came back, nothing had happened. There was no spawning, no anything. But as soon as I got back into the room and started doing the things that I do in the room, it was a week later that eggs just started coming up all over the place. So taking a week off from your room isn't a terrible thing. It gave everybody a break a little bit, so it was kind of, kind of fun. But uh, as I have gotten further into breeding quarries, I've always had to look out for something really, really cool. I mean, everybody, if you do quarries or, or know about quarries, um, the C-111s are the, like the mega popular quarry white with black sp uh, spotted pattern all over them, and really, really high dorsal fin. Stunning fish, but that's so far out of my budget, I want to stay married. Is there, a, <laughs> so, is there a name for that one, or just a number? That, that's just a number currently. There's no there's no name for them that I'm aware of at the moment. But uh, mm -hmm. that, that fish is on my bucket list of, of fish to get into breed, mm -hmm. and the albino gold lasers. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward. Are people reading that particular story? As of right now, I know a few who have them, but no one's actually posted that they've actually had them spawn yet. You know, I like a lot of the, I like the wild types, some of the wild types that have come in, I've really tried to, to pick up. There's nothing better than going to an auction or a club meeting and having some F1s or some generation one fish. Yes? Yeah, when you, were when you started, you, had, you said you had white pandas? Yes. Albinos or is that no, just the standard? White panda. No white pandas, they're not albino, they're, they're, they're colored eyes. So, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're really pretty neat. I got the, a, me and a friend split a batch. He got uh, 25 and I got 25 and we're supposed to sell off half of them, but I kept the whole group. Because I'm like, yeah, no, no, these are gonna stay here with me. And they just started spawning probably about a month and a half ago. And they're small, they're not big. I mean, pandas in general aren't a big quarry. They tend to stay relatively small. But they're they're probably an inch and a quarter in size. They'll lay five, six, seven eggs at a clip that I'm seeing. So there's probably more. They're just eating. So, but anywho, eggs. So what I do when I get eggs, which is virtually every day, it seems of late, I go and I remove the eggs with a razor blade because if I leave them in there, chances are they're food. I put them in a small container. And I put it, and I'll get to the picture of the container. I use a little bit of pool filter sand in the bottom, and I use capital leaves, almond leaves. That's it, one almond leaf in the tank, and if I have them available, shrimp. I put some live shrimp in the tank to take care of the eggs. They do the work. And I saw the video on, on YouTube, 
And the lady swore by it. She said, oh, you gotta try this because the methyl blue just wasn't working for me. So I did this and I got like 80 or 90% of the egg passed out of the dome. Can it really be this simple? So uh, albino and bronze were my first two. And then a friend at New England Club gave me some long, thin platyatus to spawn. <coughs> he says, try these and see if you can get them. I've had them for years. They won't, they won't breed for me. So I put them in a tank and they spawn. That's really lucky. I'm going to go with luck because that's really what it is. It isn't skill. Um, with my quarries, so as I started to get them in these little boxes, and I got them at uh, Walmart, they're like five bucks. It's a, a little better box. It's about this wide, about a foot long, and this tall. Put an air stone in there with the leaf, a little bit of sand, and the eggs go in the bottom of the shrimp. Uh, two or three shrimp in the tank is all you need. What kind of shrimp? Uh, I use red cherry because I've got a bunch in the, in the tank. They, uh, once the eggs hatch, I usually wait about a day or so for the sacs to absorb and then start to feed them a fine powdered or a 0.5 micron golden pearl. If they have, it's almost, it's really powder. And then uh, baby brine shrimp within a day or two and start getting them the size. And I'll keep them in that tank changing the water every other day for that small of a tank. And then um, get them to probably about a quarter of an inch in size before I move them to these two and a half gallon tanks. And some of the quarries grow much faster. As you know, some quarries grow way faster. And ES grows like overnight, they double in size. So I'll use sponge filters and some I have box filters for as well. Um, I will uh, clean the water every other day, 50%. When you've got that many fish in a small tank, you kind of don't have a choice. And then uh, the sponge filters are clean every other week. I feed the fish four to five times a day. You know, so I'm in there. It's just a couple of squirts here, a little bit of powder there, just, just to keep up. Because there's so many, you always see the skinnier ones. So you just go in and feed them a little bit more and a little bit more. Some of the products I use is right here. This is a good example. This is the bed of your that I get at Walmart, Capilese. I wanted to bring two with me because if, if you look at some of the ones that you get, some are very, very dry and the tannins don't release from the leaf and change the color of the water. And others, good quality leaves, if you put them in the water, should change the color of the water. It's either a tan or a brownish color. That's when you know the tannins are really good and they're antifungal, so they keep the eggs from really fungusing up. You want to make sure you've got good quality. You can feel them. When you, when you touch the leaf, dry leaf that's over dry will crumble. The ones that are, are good quality tend to stay more solid. You can actually, if you squeeze them and rub them, you'll feel a little bit of the oil coming off them. So select your leaves wisely. I use several different kinds of food as well. Rapashi's awesome for quarries. They absolutely love it. The um, grub pie is their favorite. But uh, the guys in Norway gave me a recipe mixing these three together. Uh, I just started using the Sierra insect food because that's really great, a great product and seeing quarries eat insects. Excellent food for them. Um, Dr. Basler's, I like the garlic. Some of the others, the quarries are a little more picky on, but they really like the garlic. And then brine shrimp, obviously, frozen. Um, a little bit of flake. Those are the basic foods I use. Some of the other equipment, I've got teas, valves, air stones. I always keep 50, 100 of those items because you never know when you have to branch off here, branch off there, branch off there. So, breeding, at least breeding guppies to me, is the most important thing to remember. And if all of you guys are most, mostly sick of guys, we're right. Most of you guys are mostly sick of guys. No. Getting females to, you know, the males to chase the females and stuff like that requires really two things. And most fish require mostly two things. Water and food. Nature really takes care of the rest. It's not a difficult thing. So you have to be patient. You really take your time with what you're looking to do. And don't expect that it's going to happen for you today or tomorrow. I've got some species in the room now that I've had for four months. I've been dropped a single egg. But I know that if I tweak this or I move this, maybe I'll get something. Hatching is the same thing. 
take take your time. You're going to fail more the first three or four times, but it's once you get the, the science down, and I'll, I'll put some videos up on the YouTube page of setting up the bins for everyone to see, because I've got three or four running right now, and just show you the process of how I put it together so you can see it. But uh, once you start to get them going, you guys know, stories lay what? Some of them lay hundreds of eggs in a couple of hours, some will lay five or six in a day, and then lay eggs for four or five days. Stir by is a good example. I have stir by breeding right now. A young group I put together is like 15 and a 21. They're laying a dozen eggs every day. It's like, guys, why don't you just drop them all? It's just gonna make my life easier. So I gotta go fishing for eggs pretty much every day. I've got my Instagram page. I've got my YouTube, which currently is empty. This video is gonna go on there and hopefully some new ones pretty soon. Everything goes through my 22 year old son. He's a Christian something guy. You're gonna be terrible. Let me help you. So I let him. I let him do that for me. Um, I have loved the hobby for a very long time, and I did cichlids a long time ago. I had tons of cichlids with my dad. Uh, I've bred angels. I've bred corys. I've bred discus. I, the numbers that I was going back. Tetras. It just such a fun thing to get into and it never gets old. As soon as you get tired of something, there's something else to do. And with the quarries, it's amazing to me because you've got so many species available to you and they're always coming up with new ones. I mean, I know just recently there was a big expedition down in South America and there's like four or five brand new species that they pulled out of a, a river that they haven't seen before. And now they're starting to name those numbers and it's always changing always fluctuation so getting quarries great looking quarries has been really easy for me i have a few friends in new york which i'm grateful for that bring stuff in and i get lucky once in a while and get something i really really want or hoping to look at it and go yeah i'm taking that but uh take your time please go to this follow me on instagram send me messages send me questions i love answering that stuff um technical like i said no fun is all I'm interested in. The hobby is supposed to be fun. You know, I can't tell you this breeds this way. I keep everything separate so I don't have to worry about crossbreeding for hybrids. I don't do any of that. You know, I'm not lucky enough where I have the space and most people don't. But uh, it's just, it's a blast to get to do this. First kid had been talking to me a couple of weeks back. Hey, you want to try this? You want to give it a shot? He says, you know, some people might be interested. And I'm like, what the heck, what could go wrong? I could either choke or do well. So hopefully I did well for you guys. Does anyone have questions? Roughly, how many species are there? Oh, I, I, I have no idea. Oh my goodness. If, if you just take Coriodorus alone, That's I, mean. I think there's well over 200. Oh wow. Yeah, if you add a Pesiodorus species into that, that right. there's, there's, there, there are literally hundreds of species. Wow. That's the Doris clear. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many. I know there's a, a, a fella in Canada who breeds, I think his last time, his last marker, 244 different species of Coriodorus. How many are just the CW numbers? Um, right now, I think they just added a couple. The last count I saw was 168. CW 168 is the last number I am currently aware of that was added. So with, a, with say, 155 or so that are already named. That are named. So you're looking at already 300. Different species of quarries. And the quarry community is big, big, big against hybrids. They don't like it. There's no reason for it because there are so many species available that there's no reason to crossbreed different quarries. And when they put when people put hybrids on, the moderators are like all over them. I mean it's it's really well protected about hey, there's no need to crossbreed. You I've have never seen hybrid quarries. Yeah, I mean I've seen people crossing the weirdest things. I just I just oddballs. I don't know. Oh yes, I crossed this with that. But why? Why are you doing that? We have they have a full thing of different group types. They have some type seven, some type eight, and those you know if you put those together, they're going to crossbreed. So they try to deter that as much as possible. Um, I've never tried to crossbreed because, like I said, there's so many. Why? There's no need to bother. No need to bother. Is there any? Do all Corydoras lay? Uh, every one that I have spawned 
has laid a piece of eggs. However, the stickiness of the adhesive varies dramatically. Aeneas, it's like glued. You can't get them off. Um, I find Barbatus eggs to be the toughest to get off without a razor. You can't use your fingers. You gotta go with a razor or you crush the eggs. Um, who I find is the weakest as far as is taking the eggs out of the tank uh, that won't stick from colors. They don't, they don't stick. Um, the minute you touch them, they fall. Loxazonis is another species that, that fall off really, really easy. Um, the pandas stick pretty good. All three of this, the short, the long, bit, and the snow whites do really well. Black eggs stick really well. And I also find that the age of the quarry, if you have a younger group, the eggs tend to be more sticky. If you have an older group, they tend to be less sticky. It's really kind of odd, or maybe it's just age of maturity. I don't know. But uh, I've got a, a good sized group of full grown adult turbines. They go and they lay their eggs, and I'll go and I'll pick the eggs off, and they'll, they'll stick. Um, you, you're using a razor. I could go in with the young group, and I can put my finger and pull the egg off. And sometimes the egg won't even stick to my finger, it'll pop right off and just fall to the bottom. What's younger? So, well, I'd say younger and an older. Um, my old group of Sturbi right now are three and a half years of age. My young group is just about a year. Yep. So I've had some quarries in the room now, some of my original albinos, some of my original bronze, I've had in that room for over six years and they're still small. I've got some bronze that the females are like four inches in size. They're enormous. So I get a spawn. There's 300 eggs in the glass and it's like, it's insane. And people ask me too. Yes. Oh, well, I was just going to say, this all makes logical sense because the, as a parent, the older I get, the less I like handling the <laughs> No, thank you. Yeah, so I mean, it's really <laughs> And that's why I do this. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's amazing to me. And then how many eggs are actually dropped in a spawn? And I've got some breeding groups that there's only seven, and some breeding groups that are 14. The sevens will produce. 150, 200 eggs easily. The group of 14, I'll be lucky if I get 10 or 15 eggs. Because the species are just, it's so varied in how many eggs they drop in a, in a spawning. Loxazonis, for example, and I like this. I'll get 10 or 15 eggs in a spawn. They'll go two or three days, and there'll be another 10 or 15 eggs. And then they'll go a week, and then all of a sudden there'll be like 10 eggs. So it's like they're so sporadic in their spawning. So do you know if those are from different females, though? No, I don't because I have I've got a big yeah. mix in the breeding group, so I have no I have no consistency to know who this female or that female. I do have some species of Coriadoras, and it's really odd to me. The uh, the Pladiatus longfin Pladiatus and the longfin albino Pladiatus that I breed will not breed in a group. I have to take one female out of the tank and two males and put them in a two and a half gallon tank. And in a day or so, there are eggs everywhere, and they just pull them out. It is the only two species I've ever had that have not group spawned. I've only put them in a reverse trio and actually gotten eggs. Other than that, based on the tank, the females are enormous, no eggs. Yes, sir. I'm not going to make I'm not going to make, make a joke this time. <laughs> so okay. a question. I like jokes. No. The um, oh, don't get me closed. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, Corey Corey yeah, Corey Yep. And they tend to be uh, prolific with the eggs that are the eggs that are sticky. Yes, they're like the Adolphi species. They will put eggs anywhere, one or two at a time, on the ground, in the gravel, on the glass base, on the plants. They, I don't even want to call them eggs. They're egg scatterers. They're, there's no rhyme or reason to how they spawn whatsoever. The reason I ask is that I've got um, four duplicarians in the 20s. Periodically, they start spawning, but it's in a community tank, mm -hmm. and I can't, and I can't. You can't get to them. You can't get yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. But they don't seem to lay an awful lot. They no, small, small batches. Yeah. 
gravel bed over an old. It's your gravel your light gravel. or dark? Hmm? Black. Okay. It's black. So you, if you see the the ritual where they go chasing each other around, this is why I wanted to put some videos up. So nobody decided they wanted to perform for me today. You know, I to watch them chase each other. That's when you know things are starting. They'll go up and down the glasses. You know, Corey's they're always all over the place. Once you start to see the the males, the smaller ones chasing the females, you'll start to see where they're going, and you can look and you can try and follow, and they'll start looking for eggs. Once you spot the first one, it gets easier. You know, there's one in the sand. This is, you know, and you gotta start picking through and getting your hands in there. There's been nights where she, my wife, is sitting in the living room watching TV. I'm in the bathroom room. All the lights are off, and I'm in there with a flashlight, looking for eggs for certain species because I know if I wait till the lights come on, they'll eat them. So I'll go back there and I'll, I'll take eggs. Mine were, they were picking the eggs off almost the fast. That's the way to And yep. the peacock gudgeons were following. <laughs> but I, I also find it ironic because I feed my fish a lot. They're fed often. But it doesn't matter. They will still eat the eggs no matter how much they're fed. They always go after the eggs. This is the delicacy. Yes. Can you practice in breeding? And if so, uh, how long before you start to notice defects in the feed? Um, I've had all of my lines are. All of them are related. I've had some of them as long as six or seven years, and the defects are virtually none. Once in a while, I'll get a little bit of an albino, a bent tail. So if I go to like an auction and I know that's happening, I'll try and buy some albino quarries, bring them home, and we start to mix and bring them in and bring them back. But everyone else that I've had so far, I've had no issues, none so far. And I've got hundreds of black quarries right now, absolutely hundreds of them. I've got three breeding groups of those quarries, all related. I've had no defects from any of them. So, but so far, so good. Great. Right. Sounds yeah. lots more stable than let's say killifish. Yeah. You know, if you overdo it, you get some pretty nightmare animals. Guppies too. Guppies are like that too. There's too much inbreeding if you don't separate the lines or work your inbreeding in and out from two lines. It's a little more complicated. Anybody else? What's the ratio of male to female? I run. I, if I have a group of 14, six or seven of those are guaranteed males, no matter what, sometimes a little bit more, because some of the females I have are so big that it's going to require two males to take care of the business because they're just enormous. Like my bronze, I run seven to nine in that tank, and it's only three females max because the males are spent after they lay eggs. You can just see the males are just four out. They're at the bottom of the tank. Some of them just a little, little sideways, just puffing up, like, oh boy, he's, you know? But I've, I've seen it, it's funny, because you watch them chase, and they are so vigorous, the males are so fanatical about getting to the female, that that female's just scooching around, dancing around, doing her thing, clasping her eggs, dropping them on the glass, going away, and the males are just drop right in front of her like a pea, and just start shaking like crazy. And the females get all excited, they put the and then they just go, but the males are chasing them and chasing them and chasing them. And then you see where they're like, okay, you know what, I'm a little older now, I'm just going to go over to the side here and take a break. <laughs> you know, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Anybody else? Have you considered to use the Fairlight shoe boxes instead of base shoes? They are cheaper and bigger with volume. I, you know, I've, I have seen people use all sorts of different types of contraptions, Tupperware, stuff like that, to hatch the eggs. And I've seen the people get go with the really expensive egg tumblers and all that stuff. But I have plastic shelving that's 12 inches wide and 17 inches long like this. And there's sh shelves of four. Those little tanks, I can fit six across. <laughs> Sometimes I need 12 or 13 and they fit perfectly in right across. I got two or three shelves full of eggs and babies at, at one time. So they provide the space for me. Yeah, and then I take them as soon as, like I said, as soon as they're about a quarter of an inch in size, they go right into a two and a half, and from a two and a half, they go to a 10, once they're big enough. So you say in those spy tanks, or the egg hatching mm -hmm. little containers, you use an air stone? Air stone, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. That's all you need. You know, I put no filter in there, just an air stone. And it, you, when they're when their first eggs are first in there, you gotta make sure that the flow is, is good and strong, because you need that aeration to move you know, the water over the eggs to keep them clean. How often are you changing the water for the eggs? Eggs are living organisms, but if you change the water, yep. you should have less issues. 
eggs, I don't change the water until I, I start to see fry. Once I see fry, then I start to change the water. I don't, it only takes two or three days to get the eggs to hatch. My room's really warm. But you're not, not introducing anything else into yeah, the water? Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing else going into the tank at that time. The shrimp maintenance any eggs that are, are fungus. They'll, they'll go in and they eat those eggs. I mean, one of these times I want to have to catch it and post it on YouTube, uh, the video of watching them work when you've got a lot of eggs in the tank. It's really quite a mar remarkable if you see them. They're literally moving the eggs around mm -hmm. and spinning the eggs, and they separate the bad eggs from the good eggs. It's, it's, for like, it's almost like a symbiote relationship. I mean, you know, you know clownfish and anemones. So it, it, it blows my mind. And they don't eat the babies. The babies will hatch. They don't bother the babies, nothing. I just pull those cherry shrimp out, move everybody, <coughs> and then next batch comes along of eggs, more cherry shrimp in. And they don't, they don't eat the good eggs. Just the <laughs>
Where can we see the, that number 111? Has somebody got it? If you, if you, if you no, Google it online, it'll, it'll, come, it'll come right up. Yeah, but so nobody around, around like this. Nobody around here that I'm aware of that yeah. owns any. Nobody. I know some people have the 127, the Parallelis, and then uh, Pali is Pan, I'm probably saying it wrong to uh, Paliensis, Paliensis. You heard of those? I know Sal was breeding those uh, for, for a stretch of time. He had those. So that's another one that's, that's hard to find. But uh, yeah, I know of nobody currently breeding those. Remarkable fish, very attractive fish. Believe me, if I had the money for it, they're 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 probably an inch and a half yeah. full grown, maybe inch and three quarter. Wow. So, but the patterns are remarkable, colors remarkable, just a stunning fish, stunning fish. That's a bucket list fish. For Anybody else? Yes. Did you order a pizza? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thank you.